Hi everyone, welcome back to Life Technologies channel and thank you for watching. So today we are continuing with our Huawei Lab Simulation Series and in our today's episode, we will be focusing on how to implement L2 VPN, the pseudo wires on Huawei routing devices. So in our previous lab simulation, we did demonstrate on how to implement their 3 VPN where we had a routing protocol between the CE and PEs and we were able to exchange the routing information from the CEs and then we manage them on our MPLS backbone. But sometimes the customers require that they are in charge of their routing information. We don't need to exchange any routing information between our PEs and CEs. So in such a scenario, we deploy layer 2 VPN that simulates a uh, point-to-point -point connection for the different customer sites and then the services from the customer will be carried transparently in our MPLS backbone so we don't exchange any routing information with the customer and we are not able to see which routes or which routing information the customer is exchanging between different sites so for a layer 2 VPN the pseudo wire this is uh, a point-to-point -point emulation and uh, it's a VBWS that is a virtual private wire service that we are using to emulate point-to-point -point connection for the customer sites. So for the implementation, we need to follow different steps. And the first step will be to enable MPLS in our MPLS backbone. So remember, we are doing the emulation on our MPLS backbone. So we need to set up our MPLS backbone configure MPLS on the routers, ensure that it's enabled globally. And then we need also to enable MPLS and MPLS LDP on the interfaces. Remember we are using MPLS LDP. Uh, I mean, we are using LDP as a, our signaling protocol. So we need to enable MPLS and MPLS LDP both globally and on each interface that is in our MPLS backbone. Once we have enabled MPLS, we need to have end-to-end -end connectivity between the PEs and the P routers. So we need to configure IGP. It could be OSPF, it could be ISIS. In this case, we are using OSPF as our IGP. And then uh, once we've configured IGP in our MPLS backbone, the next step is to configure remote peering. Remember this one, we are not doing local pseudo wire this is a remote pseudo wire so we need to configure remote peering the ldp remote peering between different PEs. in our case it's p01 and p02 once we have ldp remote peering sessions up we can now deploy our pseudo wires between p01 and p02 and then configure the ce's to verify that we have end-to-end -end communication in our network so I've already prepared script and configured in our topology. Uh, so we can go through the scripts. Step one, as I've mentioned, we need to enable MPLS in the MPLS backbone. So that is the first step. And before you enable MPLS, you need to configure MPLS LSRID. As it's on Cisco or any other vendor, you always have to configure the MPLS LSRID first. And in this case, we are using the loopback zero for our LSR ID. And another thing that you need to do is to enable layer 2 VPN. Remember, pseudo wire is a layer 2 VPN. So you need to enable L2 VPN in the network on both P01, P02, and the P routers. So all routers in the MPLS backbone should have MPLS, MPLS layer 2 VPN, and MPLS LDP enabled. And then on the interface configuration, we assign IP address, enable MPLS, and enable MPLS LDP. This should be enabled on all interfaces in the MPLS backbone. So similar configuration are configured on P01, P01, and P02. So if you try to enable MPLS before you enable, for example, on this router, we don't, we don't configure MPLS, but we can use it to demonstrate that you need to enable to configure the LSR ID before you do any MPLS configuration. If I just try to enable MPLS, it will tell me that please configure MPLS LSR ID first. Even on the interface, if I try 001, I try MPLS, same. It's warning me that I need to configure MPLS LSR ID first before I can do any 
and PLS configurations. So that's why you need to enable MPLS, configure the MPLS LSR ID first, then you can enable other MPLS configurations. If you don't enable MPLS L2 VPN globally, also you will not be able to enable it on the interface. Same to MPLS LDP. So these are the configurations for interfaces and MPLS, both globally and on interfaces. Then the second step is to configure IGP. In this case, we are using OSPF. So we are running OSPF between P01, P01, and P02. And these are the configuration. And we are advertising the networks, the loopback zero interfaces and the interconnected interfaces between the routers. So I can verify that we have OSPF running. Can do display OSPF peer. We have two peering sessions to router 1, P01, and then P02. If I display OSPF routing, we are getting the route from OSPF. From P01, we can pin 3.3.3, which is the loopback 0 of P02. So we have OSPF configured, it's up, and we are able to change the routes from P01. So once we have connectivity, we can now configure our MPLS LDP remote peering sessions between the PEs. And this is how you configure. You need to specify the remote IP as the remote PE. So on PE01, we specify PE02's loopback 0 as the remote IP. Then on PE02, we are specifying the loopback 0 of PE01, 1.1.1.1 as the remote IP. So if we check the remote peering sessions, we can verify that they are display MPLS LDP session. We have a session to, to the remote peers. We can also for MPLS LDP remote peer. So you can see we have a remote peering session established between the PEs. On P02, we can also display MPLS LDP remote peer. We have a peering to 1.1.1.1. So our MPLS LDP sessions are up. So the next step is now to configure the pseudo wires, the VPWS that need to emulate point-to-point -point connection between the CEs. So on P01, this is how we configure. Remember, we are configuring it facing the customer. So on gig 00 that is connected to the CE01, we define a VLAN 100, a sub-interface with VLAN 100. And then we are now enabling our L2VC. This is how you are enabling the pseudo wire. So, and, so it is MPLS L2VC, then we are specifying the remote PE and then 100 will be our VC ID and remember that the VC ID should always be the same on both ends of the pseudo wire and then for this the row this one you can specify different values or different parameters it could be row it could be no control word it could be control word so depending on your objective you can specify different parameters so on P02, we are doing the same, MPLS L2VC, specifying P01 as the remote peer, and then the VC ID 100. So these are the L2VC configuration that we are deploying on the router to deploy the pseudo wire. So once we've done our pseudo wire configuration, we can use this command, display MPLS L2VC brief. So this one will give us the details of our L2VC. You can see we have a total of one LTP VC. Then the AC status is up, the VC status is up, and the VC ID is 100. VC type is Ethernet. The link state is also up, and the destination and the session state is up. So on P02, we can do the same display. MPLS L2VC brief 
and you are able to see the details of our VCT arrangement. The sessions are up. So on our normal router, many times we are able to run this ping and it goes through, but this one, given that it's a simulation environment, I need to check. But we have verified that our VCP ring is up. So the last step of our configuration is now to configure the CE routers. So on the CE routers, remember we used VLAN 100, so we are configuring a sub-interface, so VLAN 100, and then we are assigning the IP address, the point-to-point -point IP address between C01 and C02. So if we check on C01 and we try to ping the far end, the remote CE 100.100.1, we are able to ping, which proves that we have communication end-to-end -end, all the way from C01 to C02 via our MPLS backbone. We say that uh, this MPLS backbone is not aware of the customer traffic or the routing information from the customer. So if we were to do a packet capture on this interface, we will not be able to capture the ping packets from the customer. So these are LDP, I want to filter ICMP, ICMP packets. So we try to capture the ICMP packet that are being sent from C01 to C02. So I will initiate another thing. You can see that we are not able to capture the packets that are being exchanged between the customer. So the packets are being transported transparently on our MPLS backbone. So this is how simple it is to simulate or to demonstrate how to configure MPLS L2 VPN on uh, Huawei devices. I hope you've enjoyed the session. If you have any question, please remember to leave your comments in the comment section uh, and also to like our video and subscribe to our channel for more upcoming videos. Thank you.